Hi, I'm Cameron Bartolotta with Focus on the 46. We're here at Washington County Airport with members of the Aviation Caucus. I'm a pilot and I am showing them what great opportunities there are for the economy, for jobs, for expansion, uh, for all things great in uh, the County of Washington and with uh, small airports. So this is my plane and uh, we're going to take a nice trip around and we'll get some aerial shots and then we'll join the caucus in progress. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to go on a short tour here and please ask questions as we go. Uh, we're going to hit, hit four big stops uh, showing you what uh, some of the things we have at the airport here. This is the terminal building. We've just put a lot of money in it over the last couple of years remodeling it. Long term, we're going to move the terminal building over to the north side, but that's going to be a few years down the pike. First stop's going to be uh, Friend Air Care. And uh, they're a facility that repairs, maintains uh, turboprop and jet aircraft from all over the world. And uh, they've grown their expertise, and so they're well known, and people come to them specifically because of their expertise in this type of airplane. This is Kathy Friend, and she and her husband run Friend Air Care, which is this business. Kathy. Well, welcome. Um, we've been in business for 45 years now, over 45. We've been here for probably 25. Love Washington County Airport. Our business is, is unusual in that we are strictly aircraft maintenance. And we have customers who not only fly from different parts of the country, but also out of the country to have their maintenance performed here. We also travel to other parts of the world, actually. We've just been in Germany recently and in England. Um, doing work. So we have a worldwide reputation. Um, what makes us special, I think, is our employees. We have 17 employees, most of whom have been with us for over 20 years, some going on 30. Um, and they are, they're the heart of our, our organization and they're wonderful. Um, we were talking prior to your visit about the impact that the uh, aviation sales tax has played in our business. Um, since its repeal on aircraft maintenance repairs, we have seen um, some interesting results. Um, I think that, for example, uh, what we are seeing is an increase in our um, ADA Onyx installs. And these are significant. Uh, many times they're over $100,000. So in the last year, we have seen about $400,000 increase, and that is significant. And the fact that there's no sales tax on top of that dollar figure makes a big difference. The other thing that we've noticed is, and it actually was brought up to us by one of our pilots, is an increase from the planes from Mexico. And you have to understand, these are corporate aircraft. These are not people flying on a nice day like today. Um, and what they tell us is that in the past, they had their maintenance performed in Texas which has an 8.75% sales tax, I believe. So it is to their advantage to come here, have their maintenance performed by people who know what they're doing, that are not practicing on their airplane, um, and it pays for them. The other significance to our area is that typically these folks stay here, and in fact, mm -hmm. we just had um, a couple who stayed here for three weeks while their wow, aircraft was being really? worked on. So they're staying in the, in the hotels, they're shopping. Going they to like the to shop. casino. They, yeah. they well, sometimes no. they go to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, when they come in with smiles on their faces, okay, we know they've want. been there. Um, and eating in our restaurants. So, um, I, I definitely can see a change and, and an impact for us. Huge. That's right. And plus, the jobs that that provides as well, well that they stay right here. And it's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, we are a very conservative company. Um, and what we are, we'll be doing in the near future is hiring for the first time in seven years. Wow, that is great. Yeah, we're very happy. And these That's are great. good jobs. These are, mm -hmm. these are well, well paid. paid. You can support your family on them. Um, I like to think our benefits are good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and that's significant for that's me. Great. So just repealing that sales tax made I think an it's, impact like that that just trickles made an down. Mm -hmm. And it is yeah. a trickle down. Right. It absolutely is. That's good to know. I'm curious, out of all the places on the planet where you could have 
uh, located this operation. Why, why right here? What, uh, what led to that decision? Well, first of all, my husband's from northern Michigan, so he, you know, is kind of open to anything. I'm a southwestern Pennsylvania gal. So you're the <laughs> And <laughs> I don't know, you. <laughs> women don't like to move too much. No, seriously, we actually had looked at Allegheny County, and um, the climate here was incredible, and that's really in, in part to the people who run this airport. Mm -hmm. And they were just, not only were they welcoming, but they made it easy for us to do business. And that, that's really, that yeah. makes a big deal. Mm -hmm. Again, we're family owned, um, our people are family to us, and that's what's important. Part of our business also, in addition to the maintenance, and that's what we were over um, in Germany and England for, is a pre-purchase evaluation. So mm -hmm. you want to buy a house, you have someone come and take a look at it, make sure the furnace is working and the, everything's in, in good order. Well, same thing for aircraft. They bring their aircraft here, we do a pre-purchase, oftentimes we fix whatever needs to be fixed. And in the past, they would fly, I think it was Delaware, and they would get a newspaper and hold the newspaper in front of the contract because they had no sales tax there. So now they can complete the job here in the state, in, in Pennsylvania. And that has really helped just to transition and to make a difference for, and make it easy for the buyer and the seller. Well, but we need that final piece mm -hmm. of, yes. of the sales piece of that. Of mm -hmm. the, this is why we're trying to yeah. collect the data Mm -hmm. to show what happened after we did the first piece, which yeah. exactly. you know what a battle that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's definitely made a difference. And again, I, I can't stress how important that is and the fact that we're going to be adding a technician in the near future really exactly. helps. Yeah, and to get rid of that sales tax, and people were saying, oh, but we need that money. We need the sales tax money to stay in Pennsylvania. Um, these machines have wings, <laughs> and it's real yes. easy to fly it someplace else with a more friendly tax system where you can avoid the sales tax on a lot of those repairs. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that just eliminating that has brought back the jobs, it's brought back the income. And like you said, I can't believe three weeks a couple spent right here in, mm -hmm. in Washington mm -hmm. County. Uh, you know, while their plane is being repaired. That's, fan that's fantastic. News. Well, I think as you know, it's expensive to fly an aircraft. I mean, you don't just get in there, turn on the key and like your car. I mean, it's hundreds of do if not thousands of dollars per hour in the air. Mm -hmm. So um, if that is an expense to bring it anywhere. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go to Dallas Airmotive and they're a major engine overhaul facility that is throughout the country and they've and they've got a major presence here that uh, that we were able to provide them and therefore they've grown their business here. All right, we, uh, we're part of BBA Aviation or Dallas Air Motor. We, we repair turbine aircraft engine for the uh, corporate aircraft. Um, we, we started, opened a shop back in 2008, um, expanded, what, two years ago from that facility up here, added six more employees. We start out with three, now we got we got nine, so we're expanding, we're getting ready to expand again, so um, things are good. Uh, we've been talking to Ron about adding another 80 by 80 building next door, so mm -hmm. um, it'll bring bring more jobs. And you know. remember I just told you about, you know, jet engines, etc., and then regular engines, uh, or not, or aspirated engines. These guys do jet engines, which are for both the turboprop and turbo the jets, yep. and, the, and the turbo jets. Yep. Right now, we have, we have certifications from the OEMs to repair. Um, right now, I have a couple guys in, on road trips in Virginia right now working on an aircraft. So we not only work on aircraft here, but we do AOGs which throughout is? the Northeast. So I have the Northeast region, and part of that, AOG. part of this yeah. aircraft on ground. There you go. means a broke yeah. aircraft, people are losing money, people are mm -hmm. mad. So, <laughs> But we, our, our main uh, Northeast field service is out of here. We coordinate all the tooling out of here, personnel. We have personnel throughout the Northeast stationed, you know, various cities. So, But everything's coordinated out of here. This is kind of the Northeast hub, so to say. But... Uh, and am I correct in saying that a couple of years ago you had a facility in New Jersey that they've actually closed up and consolidated? Yeah, here. we had we mm -hmm. had one in Dayton, so. Ohio, one in, in New Jersey. What it's led to that the, decision? Just the market, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think they were wanting to, you know, centralize on one one location, one hub, 
you know, and still and capture the business. A, so this guy's done a good job as far as getting the business in and and working with his bosses as far mm -hmm. as getting the work here. Right. And so that's. Right. We fostered. Thank you. Yes, that's fostered. and fly-in capability. We have fly-in capability. We work with Ron at Skyward, so um, we actually we have a golf stream coming in mm -hmm. the beginning of the year for yeah. engine engine changes. So mm -hmm. we're kind of excited about that. Yeah. So Great. we're hoping, and and Jason said the fly-in traffic has increased because when they were down in the basement of Skyward Aviation, which we'll show you later, uh, most of that and and most of it still is they truck the engines in. They truck mm -hmm. the engines from the airplane here and then do the work and truck them back. But he's seeing an uptick in this Gulfstream as an example of flying in here, changing the mm -hmm. engines here while the airplane's here, and then that gives you twofold. Number one, you're doing the work here, but then number two, the airplane's flying in, buying gas, mm -hmm. uh, and then goes back to the where do the pilots stay and who's right. coming with them, etc. So that's that's a benefit it's, it's, it's a benefit for the whole county yeah i sure. mean you you've got you know hotels and rental cars and yep. they're buying fuel they're renting yeah. hangars so it's it's a win for everybody yeah. so yeah so right. we're hoping to increase that more and more and what you were talking to uh, to scott there about the some of your billing you're doing here now because of the sales tax exemption right? oh right right we have a we have an aircraft flying in next month, and then we got one coming in January because of the, you know, the tax break on the aircraft maintenance. A absolutely, we've seen we've seen uh, a lot of customers who take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, uh, it's How beneficial. How did we find out about it? The web. It was on the internet. Okay. Yeah, there was. Uh, I mean, aviation is a small world. I'll tell you that. Anything that happens that deals with aviation spreads like wildfire. Everybody knows about it sooner or later. So um, that's good. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 sitting in a good place right now because you know Ohio doesn't have the the tax on aircraft maintenance. So you know it's very easy for a, a customer to fly over top us and go right over to Columbus or Cleveland or or mm -hmm. Akron or wherever. So we're we're sitting in a good spot. All right. Next stop, we're going to go over to Audia, which is the, which is a nice sized hangar. It has a has a Gulfstream Four. Unfortunately, the Gulfstream Four is not there. It's out on a trip. Uh, <coughs> but uh, again, it's a nice air nice facility to have on the, on the airport. <coughs> There's two facilities here. Uh, quiz question: What's FBO stand for? FBO, fixed base operation. So that we have two fixed base operations here at the field, and they're the people that, t that take care of the airplanes that come in. They have their own airplanes that they'll, they'll, they'll uh, take care of. And then if you want to fly in here, get gas, get some maintenance, whatever, then they'll take care of you. <coughs> so this one is one of the FBOs here. You started out in the FBO there in the terminal, and then this is Air Charter Service right here. That's our second FBO. Now, when we cross the runway, look to your left and see all that hillside up in there, kind of the hillside. That's where we're going to extend the runway. We're buying property up there, and I'll show you this afternoon. But we essentially own a lot of that property going down, looking down the runway. And we're going to extend the runway, hopefully, to 6,500 feet from our current 5,000 feet. And so that's going to be a big project. You need 6,500 to go full load on a Gulfstream 4 or a Lear, Lear uh, 65. If you want to go full load of fuel, hot day, full passengers, you need 6,500. Mm -hmm. Landing's not the problem. Taking off is the issue. Yeah. 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 That's a big one. Yeah, they need to. When you are you, when you've got a multi-engine airplane, yeah. like you're taking off the Gulfstream Four, if you lose an engine just as you take off, you've got to be able to single in with a single engine clear that little ridge out there. Mm -hmm. You can't clear the ridge, then you don't you don't go. Yeah. You have to download fuel. All right, let's uh, next stop here. This is Mike Bird. He uh, works for Audia Group or to, uh, Rob Andy's Washington Penn Plastics, uh, and this hangar houses their corporate airplane, which is the Gulfstream 4, mm -hmm. uh, and so they use it to fly all over the world to their different business locations.
Mike, over to you. Okay, sure. Uh, our facility is six years old. Uh, we moved it locally because uh, we are a family-based company based right out of Washington, PA. And uh, like Mr. McGowan said, we do fly all over the world. We have com part of our companies in Bratislava, one in France, one in Mexico, and then uh, several in uh, the U.S. We're building a new plant down in Georgia as we speak. So we are going very well at this time. I mm -hmm. uh, don't know what else. As you can see, it's a corporate hangar. We try to keep it very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people come in and comment on our floor, but it takes a lot of work to keep the floor this way. Cole does a great job of doing that. And uh, we really love Washington County. It's home, home for us. Great. Gulfstream 4, passenger-wise, again, it depends on how you have it rigged, but yeah. what, you can carry 13, 15 Yeah, ours, ours is rigged to house 13. Yeah, mm. so. 13. And, and they can take out of here on a, on a day like today and go to Europe. Well, you no. Know, not quite. Not quite. Not quite. If the runway was another there you go. little bit longer, yep. uh, we could do that, but right now we can only put enough fuel on to get up the coast and then we refuel and then we take off from there and go across the pond mm -hmm. and come back so it's just if it was if it was another thousand feet longer we could load up here and you wouldn't have to stop for fuel no nope, we would not have to stop for fuel mm -hmm. so it makes a huge difference it does a lot of people don't understand that just a few more feet well you know a few thousand mm -hmm. feet or so it really makes all the difference in the world with sure what does. kind of planes with what kind of companies what kind of businesses can can participate in a county airport yep. it makes a huge huge difference so that's sure something is. that i'm kind of passionate about and that's why okay. i joined the aviation caucus because it's not just those huge commercial airports that people are talking about i think county airports make a gigantic difference in the economy of every part of every region of pennsylvania with the, the yep. changes here because of marcellus shale yeah what kind of impact has that had on the uh the the county airport since you know 10 years ago We've seen, well, we've seen a lot more traffic, uh, a lot more airplanes coming in and going from Oklahoma, from Texas, going up, stopping here, maybe going up to central Pennsylvania. Uh, and so therefore it gives us more business, more gas, more people uh, staying, wanting rental cars, etc. All right, now you can get a good look at the outside of the hangar. That's a big hangar. And, and like we say, it, it is designed to house two Gulfstream 4s at least, maybe Gulfstream 5s, okay? Now, stormwater pond right there, and then if you go just to the, to the right of that, that's where we're gonna expand and put uh, uh, facilities in to, to build four big hangars. Not quite as big as this guy, but probably 120 by 120. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna All make the, here. the ramps, the taxiways, the roads to it, and then have other corporate folks come in here and build a hangar similar, similar to Audius. And we think if we, we'll do it in phases, but we think it'll work very well, and that'll give us more business to the, to the airport. Mm -hmm. But you see, you've got about 15, 20 feet of rock to move to mm -hmm. make that thing level enough to do it. Now another thing, we're, we're working with range resources, we're hoping to put a couple of oil uh, gas well pads close to the airport or on the airport mm -hmm. so that we get gas royalties yeah. going under the airport. The county, does, well. yeah. the county does own the gas rates on a portion of the, of the uh, uh, airport land. We got about 360 acres, Scott? 30. Where? 60. You're at the airport? Yeah. We're 60. almost four now with the yeah. addition of uh, our windsock, solar panel to run the windsock. Another, uh, we own some of the land down in the bottom there, and so that will be future development that will support the airport. This is Skyward Aviation that we're going into right now. Skyward Aviation now has owns a number of facilities. They own this one. They own the one that we just drove by up there that we're going to end up in, and they own the Dallas Air Motive building. So they own the hangars. The county owns the land underneath of this hangar and the one up there. Uh, actually, not the land underneath the uh, Dallas Air Motive one because that's off airport. Right. So, well, we're here with Brianna Castiola, is a good friend of mine. She's the daughter of Ron Corrado, Ron and Sue Corrado, who owns Skyward Aviation, and she's going to give us a little scoop on, uh, on how Skyward is uh, instrumental here at Washington County Airport. 
Brianna. Thank you, camera. Mm -hmm. So again, my name is Brianna Cassiola, and what I do specifically here is all of the charter coordination and scheduling for our company. Um, Skyward Aviation is a private air charter um, service primarily. We also do sales and management services as well. Um, and we just uh, launched our FBO last year. So we really are uh, the full package today. Um, we started in 1993. My dad was a United States Army veteran um, who used to fly just across the airfield um, for the National Guard. And he had a dream back in 93 to retire from that service and begin Skyward Aviation. So um, we've been proudly serving the area uh, for a very long time and been here at Washington County proudly the entire time. So um, basically what we do is uh, we are in an expansion phase, which is awesome. Um, we are growing this year from three jet charter aircraft to six, um, which is very exciting. We're getting some bigger aircraft and some more diverse diversity on our fleet, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so in particular, this aircraft behind us is our Learjet 35, and it is um, pretty much your most typical bread and butter aircraft in the industry. It's a light jet. They're kind of known as the working horses of the fleet. Um, they're fast, they get you where you need to go, um, and they have a very long range. So this aircraft seats about eight people, and um, we pretty much fly for business and a little bit of pleasure. Um, we do have some larger aircraft on our fleet as well that can handle some longer range needs and um, just more kind of comfort and luxury really more than anything. So, um, but this one is actually owned by Skyward Aviation as you can tell by our classic colors here. <laughs> it match all of our aircraft um, and properties. So, um, you know, like I said, this is pretty much the bread and butter of our fleet as the light jet market is. And we're really proud to um, have so many light jets on our fleet that can serve the Washington County and Pittsburgh area. So, How many planes do you have? Um, currently we have, like I said, three on charter. We're expanding to six this year. And then we manage upwards of 15 right now. So, mm -hmm. And that market grows and changes pretty much, I don't want to say daily, but probably monthly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really exciting time. This is historically also our busy time in the fall. Um, this is when businesses are seeing that maybe they have room left in their budget or they have some things they need to close mm -hmm. up before the year's end. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like a very busy time for, um, you know, business, especially in the, mm -hmm, in the energy sector, which is huge in this area um, and makes up probably 60% of our flights today or more. Okay. So has that number, has, has that gone down a bit because of, you know, the uh, less expansion of the oil and gas industry? They're a yeah, we actually now. have seen a dip in the oil and gas and energy in general markets mm -hmm. um, this year. Um, I would say it had hit us mostly around June, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. is where we started to feel that that dip. Um, we had a very slow summer. Mm -hmm. um, we're very proud to say things have picked up this fall um, as expected. So, but we did, uh, we did have a pretty slow summer that uh, industry-wide actually, um, but specifically this region really felt the pain. Certainly with uh, the sales tax, you know, any of our sales that do happen are happening out of state because of Pennsylvania's sales tax. Um, if we could have that removed, that would be wonderful on many levels. Um, we would get to see a lot of sales happening here, whereas we're doing broker deals and all different kinds of states, which is a huge hardship depending on you know, the pre-buy process and things like that. It just it makes for a, a harder deal. Now, again, we're very fortunate this year we do have a lot of expansion, but I have to say our aircraft sales in general are probably not what they could be. Um, and I think the sales tax is a huge component of that. Mm -hmm. And I also, um, and I plan to talk about this a little later, I also really fault the um, constraints of our runway up here. You know, we have been so grateful to have Senator Bartolotta supporting us um, as a smaller county airport, but really, We've been named the energy capital of the East, and Washington County should be growing and thriving. Right. And we are missing opportunity in business because they're going to the larger runways in Pittsburgh. Right. It's and even though they have to pay, you know, more money, a lot more in landing fees, mm -hmm. and there's a security yep. thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot and further right. from their headquarters, which is right in South Point. Yeah, right here is where they need to be. We're going to Hangar Three now, which is uh, another one of Skyward's hangars, and. They use it for storage of airplanes that you'll see, and uh, we need more. We're out of space uh, for airplanes that want to come in here and be stored, stay here, overnight here, whatever. You heard on the tour 
earlier that there are um, a need for additional mechanics here, which is a great thing. Um, maybe right now we're not um, going to struggle too hard with getting those mechanics, but from uh, the statistics in 2020, we'll need 500,000 pilots, but we'll need 600,000 mechanics. Um, that's pretty significant. And if we don't get people starting through the system, um, there just won't be enough of them around. The cost of getting the education and training is, is, is certainly part of that. Now let's, let's move on to uh, uh, airport funding. This is the topic that's near and dear to my heart and I use on a daily basis. So um, as Bill mentioned, we've invested over $3 million into the facility over the last couple of years. Um, you saw most of it in pavement. Um, which pavement is very expensive, but in order to be that first class general aviation airport, um, your number one priority is to have good infrastructure. We've been uh, uh, very lucky and pleased by all of the support that we've had, both from the commissioners um, and the state and the feds, um, to get that funding to secure those infrastructure improvements, which has uh, been vital to our continued growth and economic development here. As you saw on the tour today, um, we accommodate a variety of airplanes. 1941 uh, PT-17 behind you to the Gulfstream 4 that was not here today, which is a good thing, means it's flying and, do, and they're doing business. And all the airplanes that were not in the hangar at Skyward, um, you know, that's a good thing, they're out flying. But we accommodate a vast variety of these, uh, these uh, tools to these businesses to um, meet their customers' needs and deliver their goods and expand their footprint, which is a good thing for Washington County. Um, it, it makes us global, not just local. If the state would take a look at ways to market and attract corporate aviation and take a look at some of the states are, um, that are today participating at NBAA, um, tr uh, trade show areas that are probably a, a quarter to a third of this that have different um, kiosks set up for the different cities that have airports where you can gather specific information for that city and uh, you have chief pilots and, and uh, the heads of flight departments and things like that taking a look around at places where they can park corporate aircraft and that's very important to our communities. So I'd encourage you to take a look at NBAA while it's in Las Vegas right now. It'll be on the East Coast next year in Orlando. So if you haven't attended, it'd be a great opportunity to get out and take a look at a way to um, advertise, market Pennsylvania because I think we have a lot to offer here. Some tourism dollars put into marketing our airport would actually benefit the hotels and all the other tourist uh, sites here by bringing people in. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're beautifully located where we are. We're a very short drive from so many other um, great, great places. But honestly, if you've got wings, you can be here in no time. And there's a lot to do here. So I think that's an excellent point. It's criminal to me when I'm going to marketing events and things like that that we are uh, losing so much business to other areas and um, you know because we're not booming quickly enough there are startup companies you know forming in Morgantown and in other neighboring states soaking up all of our oil and gas business and all of our prospects uh, because we're just not getting on top of it and the marketing dollars are falling on us personally as a company which can be kind of difficult um, with all the other you know funds we have to put out for improvements here at the airport and things like that. So we really thank you for taking the time to come in and share with us a lot of your, your issues and your points. Um, but these are things that we're going to be taking back with us for the Aviation Caucus and share with the rest of the caucus members, um, points that are, are, are vital to us to uh, expand and improve upon uh, uh, not just the, the big international airports that are in, in Pennsylvania, but all of these wonderful uh, county airports, the smaller ones that really make such a difference on the economy. Uh, throughout all of Pennsylvania, and I thank all of you so much for being here. I truly do. And thank you so much, Scott, for, for arranging this, and your staff for doing such a great job.